Okay, now when you're looking at an equation for a function, okay, and you want to graph it, well, one method that will always work and give you at least a rough sketch of what it looks like is by making a table, right? You're setting up a little sort of thing and have x and then f of x and plug in some values for x and plug them into the function and you get the y values and you can plot those points. But sometimes, in fact, if you're going to use that method or even if you're not going to use that method, you can save yourself a lot of work if you realize in advance that the function has some symmetry properties. For example, suppose you knew in advance that the function does the same thing on the right-hand side of the, of, the, of the y-axis as it does sort of on the left-hand side. That is, maybe it's a reflection of one another. If you knew that, then if you knew the graph of one side, you knew the graph of the other side. Let me just give you a, a real fast... Um, qualitative illustration of what I'm talking about here. So suppose that I have the following. Oh, in fact, let me actually take, this is a double piece of paper routine. So suppose that I have some axes here, and I don't tell you my function. I'm not going to even tell you what it is. I'm not going to write it down. Don't worry. that we know No x's, no y's, no f's, nothing. But all I tell you is that the function looks like this. It looks like this on that side. And I tell you one other fact. If you were to reflect this, that's actually what happens on the other side. Well, see, then if you think about it, all you need to do is take a mirror, and if you took the mirror and put it there, you would actually have an accurate picture of the function. All I knew was one side, and then knew that, in fact, this reflection thing holds. So if that were the case, I could draw that in. And then, voila, I'd have the graph. So if I was plotting points, for example, I'd only have to plot these points because I knew they'd have corresponding analogs on the side. All right, well, a function that has this property, namely a function that's just a reflection over the y-axis, and if you were to take this picture and literally reflect it over, you'd get the other side, just like that. Such a function is actually called an even function. Now, why would it be called an even function? Well, if you think about it, this looks like a parabola. And you notice the exponent there is an even number. Well, it turns out that's why we think of these as even functions. So an even function is any function which has the property that whatever you do on the right-hand side, if you were to take that image and just reflect it like this over to the left-hand side, that actually is what happens on the left. If that is the case, we call that function even. Or in other words, another way, another way of saying it is we say that this has a symmetry with respect to the y-axis a symmetry with respect to the y-axis, because whatever I do on the left-hand side of the y-axis, I do the symmetric thing over on the right-hand side of the y-axis. For example, x squared. Well, now, how do you actually find a, uh, whether something is symmetric or not by just looking at the, the equation? Well, it turns out, if you think about it, let's see what would have to be required. Suppose I have something really exotic here. Whee! And I do the exact same thing on the other side. Now, this is really challenging. If you think other things have been challenging, because you've got to sort of do it, and you want it to be exactly the same. OK, so it's the exact same thing on both sides. What would, what would that mean if this function were just called f of x? Well, let's think about it. It means that if I take this point right here, x, and see what it equals, well, that would be f of x. That's the value of the function there. What about its flip? Well, the flip value here would be negative x. And if I plug in negative x, what should I get? Well, I should get that same height. So I should get that same point. So what I see is f of minus x should equal just f of x. If you think about it, this is a mathematical sort of analytic way of saying this reflection business. If I plug in a number x or plug in its negative, this is the mirror reflection, the values are the same. The height is the same. You see? For example, let's take a look at f of x equals x squared. What happens if I plug in f of minus x? Remember what that means. Wherever I see an x, I now plug in minus x. So that would be minus x all squared. Well, what's a minus 1 times minus 1? That's just 1. So this is just x squared. And that equals the function. So that means this function is even. This function is even because f of x equals f of minus x. What does that mean in terms of the picture? In terms of the picture, what that means is if I take a point like 2 and plug it in, I get 4. If I take the opposite, negative 2, and plug it in, I still get 4. See, f of x equals f of minus x. That means that we have this reflection. 
And if we have that reflection everywhere, we say the function is even. So let's take a look at some examples of functions that are even. f of x equals 2x to the fourth minus 1. The question is, is this an even function? Is this sort of a function that is symmetric over the, the y-axis? The only thing I have to do is look at f of minus x. So what that means is wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace that x by minus x. So here's the x. So I see 2 times the quantity minus x to the fourth minus 1. What does that equal? Well, a minus 1 to the fourth is just a plus 1. And x to the fourth is just x to the fourth. So I see a 2. Since it's an even power, the negative sign goes away. And that's why we think of them as even. And look, that's the original function. So what I see is f of minus x is the same thing as f of x. So f of minus x equals f of x. This function is even. Even, or sometimes people say symmetric with respect to the y-axis. What does the graph look like? Well, actually, I'll just show you what the graph looks like. It's a 4 degree, so it sort of looks like a parabola that's been a little bit sharpened. I shift it down by 1, but then I have to elongate it. So it sort of looks like this. Sort of the graph of it, but you can certainly see it is symmetric. It is symmetric to the, to the y-axis. And I just checked that by looking at f of minus x and seeing if it's the exact same thing as f. If it is, then we know it's even. OK, let's take a look at something else. What if we have a function that looks like this? That's an odd exponent. And what does the graph of that look like? Well, that's the cubic function. Let me remind you what that looks like. It sort of has a symmetry too, doesn't it? But it's not exactly just a reflective thing. In some sense, what I've got to do is reflect, and then I've got to reflect again. Do you see that? If I reflect this to this side, it's now up here. But if I then reflect that down, it's over here. It's sort of a visual thing here. If you're sort of an artsy person, you can really see this. This reflection goes to here, but then if I flip it over here, it comes down here. So sometimes this is called actually symmetric with respect to the, to the origin because I sort of have to flip around the origin. I've got to flip and then flip. So this is sometimes called symmetric with respect to the origin. And such functions are called odd functions. Again, because the exponent that actually re results in these in most cases is an odd exponent. So how do I know if a function is, is odd? Well, let's think about what would happen here. If that's a value x, then its height would be f of x. And how would that relate to what happens if I plug in the opposite number, minus x? Well, I should not get the same thing. This would be f of minus x. These two numbers shouldn't be equal. But what's your guess? How should these numbers be related? Well, the answer is, this number should be negative that number. They should be the exact same number, but the sign should be off. So when I flip and then flip over, I get this number. So this number and this number should be just off by a negative sign. So that would mean that f of minus x would equal negative f of x. That's what it means to be an odd function. That's what it means to be symmetric around the origin, if this is satisfied. Where is this coming from? Just think about it. What it means is, if I look at the value of the function here, and then look at minus x, instead of just being the same there, which would mean it would be even, it's the negative of that value. So let's do this example here and see if this really is an odd function. f of minus x, what do I do? I just plug in minus x wherever I see an x. Now minus 1 cubed is actually not 1, it's negative 1. So in fact, this equals negative x cubed because that minus 1 cubed is actually a negative sign. And look, minus x cubed. Well, the function was x cubed, so this actually equals minus f of x. And that's exactly the criterion that I require. f of minus x equals the same thing as negative f of x. So this function is genuinely odd, which means what it does on this side is not exactly the same what it does on this side. You've got to flip this way and then flip that way. It's symmetric with respect to the, to the origin. If a point's here, if you go through the origin, you'll find that point here. OK? Let's try one last example. How about this? x squared plus y squared equals 9. What is that the graph of? Actually, that's not a function, because you can't really solve it for y. You'd get two answers. But you may remember that, in fact, that's actually the graph of a circle. A circle that's centered at the origin and has radius 3. 
So it would look like this. What's the symmetry here? Well, this is actually symmetric with respect to the x-axis, because look what happens. If I take this picture and flip it over, it actually is the same. So this has a symmetry with respect to the x-axis. It also has a symmetry with respect to the y-axis. And it also has a symmetry with respect to the origin. Because if you take a point here, notice there's a corresponding point here. So this is, a, this is a, an object, this is an equation, whose graph is actually symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So it sort of has this even property. With respect to the x-axis as well, but also with respect to the origin. So it sort of also has an odd property. So in fact, a lot of these functions can actually have both properties. A lot of these relationships, anyway, can have both properties or many properties at once of symmetry. The bottom line is, if you can detect some symmetry, then you know by just graphing one side, you automatically get the other side by either flipping or flipping and then flipping again. Anyway, that gives you a sense of symmetry in a picture and also a better chance of, to figure out what the graph may look like.